Today we're joined by a group of young men who, thanks to the remarkable investigative journalism of New Central and the dedicated efforts of the Ghana police, they have become testaments of possibilities for Nigerians and their families. They were recently rescued after being trafficked from Nigeria to Ghana under the false promise of job opportunities. Daniel, Zeal, Bright, Ezekiel and Victor are young Nigerians who were in search of better opportunities for their lives but found themselves being trafficked to another country to live a life far from their imaginations. New Central took on the course of investigating the whereabouts of Daniel Nduagwebe and Zeal Duruji, whose mothers had raised alarm on their disappearance, urging relevant authorities to expedite efforts to locate and rescue their children. New Central's investigative journalist, Marshall Onaye, led the mission of this rescue while searching for only two teenage boys with great support from the Ghanaian police, I must say, we found three other boys at the traffickers' hideout. I'm joined by Daniel Nduagwebe, Zil Duruji, Bright Polinus, Ezekiel Okon, Victor Eze, and their families. They have all showed up in our studio after we were able to bring all the boys back, five of them from Accra in Ghana, and their parents are here with them. In fact, one of the sisters, she's also here with us today. I can say, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to all of you. Yeah, I can't hear you. So it's such a joy to be able to say that we've got you. Um, when we said we were going to go out and find the boys, we did not expect that we were going to find five young men. Let me start with you, Zil. Can you recall the day that you got a call? What happened on that day? If you can hand him the mic. I can't actually recall the particular actually know the day we got there, go to the, the venue, to the place we were told to come. Okay, let me start from the very beginning then. You know that you and I had a chat when you first arrived from Accra, and I asked you, how did you get yourself into this situation? So you told me there was a gentleman in one hotel where you were working, and this gentleman, what did he tell you? How did you get his number? What was the story before you ended up being encouraged and lured to go with them to Ghana? What was the story? What happened? So um, after going, I was working at the Mato Hotel, the US, I'm at Eleganza. So when I went to his part, I went to his room, I worked as a room service, I went to attend to him at, um, in his room. Then I got to see bonus of money on the bed. What so, kind of notes? Was it 100 naira, 1,000 naira? 1,000 notes scattered on the bed. So, but we got, after attending to what he needed, so we got, he, he, we got into a conversation and he talked about having, he talked about having, having, um, always, he, he recruits boys for like acting movies and the rest. Since I had experience with movie acting, so I, oh, I ventured into, I was like, okay. I, I ventured into, I was like, okay. Um, I have done this kind of thing before. Okay, that was what that was what happened. He got my contacts, and we started talking from there. So he also asked me if I had, if I had, um, I had somebody to bring in. I said I have a friend. We we go together. We go to shoot together. And your friend turns out to be Daniel. Daniel. Yes. Okay. So, so you called Daniel, yes. and you promised him that somebody is offering both of you an opportunity to act in a movie yes. and be involved in the production of it. Yes. So at that point, how did you, Daniel, see that? You just thought, no, I'll go with Zil. He's my very good paddy. Was that your thought? Um, not really. Um, I've been into this um, acting production something. So I do go for shoots sometimes in, around Lagos. So when he came to tell me, OK, we are going for this production far away from home, at the border side, okay, 
I said, okay, if we should go. Though I didn't allow my parents to know about it. And then I said, okay, let me go and then come back. I thought something like one day. Did you leave home in the morning or was it in the afternoon? The, in the afternoon by 9, I think. 9 a.m.? No, by 12. 12? Yeah, because I know we left. We, we entered bus by 12, 1, then. We got there by, got there by 4. 4 p.m. Okay, yeah. let me ask you, Zeal, where were you told you were going to, Zeal? Um, we were told that we ha they're having a particular border scene. Uh, um, and we were meant to be the main character because he saw us. So we were told we are having this border scene and we should be there. So which so, border did you go to to meet them? It's Seme border. Oh, so they told you, come to Seme border. Did they send you money for your transport? Yeah, he sent, he sent money, but through an agent. The agent okay. brought us directly from my Who office. was the agent that brought the money and how much did they give you? I, I don't know how much they gave me because he gave the agent the money. But he told us that, oh, this money is from this person and he said he should bring us to this particular place. Okay, so you got on a bus and you went to Semeboda from Ikota? Yes. So when you got to Semeboda, what happened? When we got to Semeboda, we were told that the location has changed. And, and they, they've moved the production to Ghana. Okay. So at that point, did you have a passport with you? No. Or you didn't have any passport? No. You had no passport? Yes. You both went there. How old are you? I'm 17. How old are you, um, Daniel? I'm 17. So both of you, 17 years old, you were asked to come and act in a movie and you got on a bus, you went to Semeboda. It took you about four hours to get there. So on getting there, you were told it's been moved to Ghana. At that point, did you get any red flag or any alarm bell ringing in your head to say, no, we can't go to Ghana. I didn't tell my parents I'm going to Ghana. When, when, we, when I got there, I had to call him, oh, why, why has, this, has this thing changed? This is not what we talked about. Oh, he talked me into it, and because of because of how things were in our home, so I felt okay. This should be like an opportunity, a one-time opportunity I shouldn't miss, because I felt okay. I can I can get enough money for myself and to to cater for my mom because she's widowed. So I thought maybe this was an opportunity. So how much did they offer you at that point to get you to go with them to Ghana from Semeboda? Um, I said earlier it's about one thousand five hundred cities. 1,500, and that sounded like a lot of money to you. Okay, so you thought that you're going to, did they tell you how long it will take for you to shoot and come back? He's, he actually said um, it was a day shoot. A day shoot? Yes. So on that day, you were looking at the time, 4 p.m. If we go quickly now, by tomorrow sometime, we'll come back. That was your thought. Yes. So when you got on the bus, how did you cross the border? Because was, you had no passport. Yes. Daniel, you too, you had no passport. The, the agents had, had means for, for which we used to like cross the border. Okay. So you crossed the border and then you got on a bus and then what happened? Um, when we got to the venue, when we got to the place, he said we should meet him at. We got down from the bus and immediately we were blindfolded at, oh, me thinking it was part of the scene. Of the of the whole of the whole shoots and we we lured or lead we were led to 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 his to his house. On getting to the house, I didn't see any production production apps and crew or nothing. I didn't see. I was asking questions. But immediately we got started. We he started beating us. Okay. We got beaten brutally on the first on the first. On day. your first day, you were beaten brutally. Was it with hand, with slaps, or with stick, or what did they use in beating you? Um, he used, if he was using both his hands, and he would use his hands. He used cutlass to to hit us on different occasions. On different occasions, yes. were you offered food? Were you offered water? No, we go sometimes days without eating. We go days without eating, no water to drink. No, even to pay itself is a problem. We go half naked, like when only our boxers to do to go about to go to go about the job. He 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 later introduced to us. 
That sounds really dreadful, uh, Zeal. Let me ask you then, um, Daniel, when you realized that you did not tell your parents anything about going with Zeal, this is your very good friends that both of you have lived for a while together around the Kota Axis. When you got on the bus and you got to Accra and somebody decided you were coming here to shoot a film, but all of a sudden you're being blindfolded. What did you think at that point? Okay. Um, at first I was scared and then I was like having some conversation with my friend. I was like, okay, let's go back. I don't, my spirit didn't accept this place. I should just, should just enter a bus and go back. And then I was like telling the guy because I don't know him much. So I was like telling him, okay, please, there, is there any way we can go back? My friend said, okay, let's just stay calm and then no way we are going to fear this, which our destination. And then after then, entering day, I was like, the guy didn't trust me no more because the way I was disturbing him at first. So um, after we got into the um, his room inside the house, he first landed me slap and then say, welcome to Ghana. So like scared. Oh, and, your yeah. slap was welcome to Ghana. Yeah. yeah. Then slap okay. and then say welcome to Ghana. I was like, uh, was it like, a joking slap or the no. one they call a dirty, nasty slap? He gave me a dirty slap. I like immediately I just tapped my leg into his house. He gave me a very hot slap. I was like, uh-uh. I just I got shocked too. I was like, oh, let me shift back. Before you know, he locked the house and then carried us to a room it was totally dark and then just off our clothes and then minute from then just started beating us for no reason i was like ah, where have i got to my day? at first i was shocked okay i've gotten into this ritualist people and then i was just scared oh you so, thought they were going to use you for ritual yeah yeah did you feel the same way zeal did it feel like this might have been ritualist especially when light was turned off and you were being beaten yeah, I felt I felt that too. I felt that too. Because the way the way I imagined myself, okay, this is what I'm going to do, and this is this is the outcome of it, or this is how it turned out, was really was really, really strange. And I was uh, our hearts was just pounding. We talked to we secretly talked to each other because we're not allowed to speak with anybody there. So we secretly talked to each other. What have we gotten ourselves into? Hmm. So that is when we we. He had this idea of talking to our, our people. Okay, let me ask um, that, um, Victor. Victor, you are how old? 20 years old. 20 years old. Yes. And at 20, you've seen quite a lot, haven't you? I've seen. You have. Okay. Yes. Uh, where are your parents? My parents live in Ebony State. In Ebony State. Your mom and dad? Yes. Both of them? Yes. But where do you live? Benin. In Benin? Benin City, yes. So how did you end up from Benin to Accra? OK. Um, the young man, Daniel, uh, I meet her for, through my brother. We can't become friends. So from there, he come. One day, he tell me, say, see, 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 be an artist, say the art comedies and uh, other things. I say, okay, uh, me, myself, right from time from school, at the arts comedies, now, which uh, be my favorite for class. And before then, I meet her. I'd already they learn mechanical engineering. It's my brother and I from the same work we did. Then when he come, come God tell me all those things. God tell me him, they stay for Ghana. I say, oh. Later, later, I caught him say, na South Africa, they stay. Say, I was like, okay, anywhere you say they stay, no concern me or nothing concern me, and you will just be a friend. I just he said his name is Daniel. Yes, I just okay. meet him and I my brother, no problem. Then after that day, on December 20th, when me and my brother from Bini, carry motorway or repair finish. They travel to go give the owner. We get accident for which states? 
or motor show on those states. Mm. And when we get the accident, the accident, they are very dangerous and then the motorway will carry some assault, born to ashes. Wow. Then after the we go, go to hospital, day for hospital, we come up for hospital, we day for the call the guy. We call as, Daniel. Yes, as a friend say, Alpha, see, 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 oh. say, no, Allah, say whether we day safe. Say yes, say okay. When we go come out, come back, come, come for us, cause he, since he be say, he be like this now, waiting at uh, the talk to do. I say, ah, waiting me one day to do, no, it don't happen, it don't happen. But sometimes the person will get the motor, when they threaten us, say we must pay for the motor. Say the money now, six million. Say you go divide that into two, me and my brother go pay. I say, ah, we, that time, so I day, I would day 19. I say, ah, we are one for the fine or this kind of money. We, I go, so, then the man called the finals from Lagos and Benin, and we would they go all places, they walk, they go Port Harcourt. The man has the man called the finals everywhere, so we no get any other place to go. Then he, the Daniel, called him, say, since he busy now, this work that they do, and I uh, still did good in acting. Say, he get, him, as he busy, they art, so say, me, make me come, make me with the art. Then my work, what they do, I still, I go still get opportunity to do the work where they go even pay me better money. I learned, say, okay, it'll be like this now. I don't already frustrate. Uh, I don't know what I go do. I don't know. So I you want. decided you're ready yeah. to go. Then and at I what point like did you now, because you were talking of accident happening in December, and then when did you decide you're ready to go and do your acting with Daniel? That was March. March. Yes. So March, you decided you're going to join Daniel. Did you go? And where did you meet Daniel? Before we come out, him a uh, day for Nigeria for Benin. Then. So you left Port Harcourt, you went to Benin? No. Did or Daniel. you were in Benin when you called him? Yes. So then, you met him in Benin? Yes. And then what happened? Then he, he told me, say, now nah, uh, South Africa, we did go then. I say okay. Me and my brother are come talk. He say me say we no go feel come out. They go the same place. They make me go since he be say the guy to say na a house at they go because I did not say as I did not no go feel stay for a person house. Maybe they talk to me anyhow, and I no go feel stay for where I no go feel stay long. Man, no see my parents or my brother. Say no problem. Say even if I come out, I work. I see money where. If we don't have one month where I decide to come back, I day free to come. I say, yeah, since it be a day like this, no problem. Then I can't move. So where did you go from Benin? How did you get to Accra? I, I first reached Lagos. Mm -hmm. Then God sent when he say agent go call carry me. That the same agent where carry this one there. I say, yeah. oh no problem, we we'll go. The agent, did he take you to Semeboda as well? Yes. The same so you Semeboda. got to Semeboda and you went through? Yes. But when, were you going to South Africa or going to Accra? Did they tell you you were going to South Africa yes. or you were going to Accra? As they go now, South Africa, I tell me, say, where they go. So you then, were going to go through Seme to South Africa? <laughs> you busy now where I never go before. You never go before. Yes. So when they told you, you two, you just follow, you don't know. Well, yeah? since you be say, now pass away, where my brother first you know, and my now my senior brother, me no go to say my brother go feel put me for a bath. So this was March or April? Nah, that March. So. That March. Yes. So you oh. got out of uh, your house in Benin, came to Lagos. From Lagos, you went to Semeboda. They told you you're going to South Africa. You got on a bus, and then you found yourself in Accra. Yes. Uh, before I reached there, now for night. Then they just delay, delay, delay everything so that I go free and enter one night. When I reach there, I never go to Ghana before. I say, ah, now nah, South Africa can't be nice inside, inside bush everywhere. The God just carry me the past backyard, pass inside, inside bush for night. I don't know where the work they go. I go this, ah, make a call this guy one over there. Now nah, for inside bush, the art comedy. I mean, mean, nah. I say, no problem. No, we'll go first. We can't enter house. We reach. 
And they look more I see camera because me myself I already know it with they use the work. They, I can't look, 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 nothing. I want to turn back. Oh. They just tell me one slap with me, no cause I be myself. Uh, I stay up to three minutes and all my eye just the black. I said, how far? You now my guy, what you call this up? Uh, it God just change word one time. God is a me they give her respect. See, be na what you call yourself. You see, be na chama. I say, ah, chama for what you me and you the art, the same art. We did the same level. Forget now you pay me transport. Highest I go pay you back. As I talk that one, another slap follow. The yeah. the second one even worse pass. As as God they happen so. Small time, the thing is, I put my clothes, I go, I wear now only bossa. I say, how I want wear bossa? Nah, no, you go tell me what I go do, I me get myself. So you were adamant that you wanted to be able to wear whatever you wanted to wear mm -hmm. because you still believe you were going to act. Yes. I say, I wear bossa. I say, how far? I want wear bossa. I be up picking. I wear my clothes. If I want more clothes, I go more clothes. As I talk and so, now even that one, so now they call Carrie King. As they beat me, finish, they call tell me, they don't even tell me, welcome to Ghana. They tell me, say, this oh, is. They your friends got welcome Ghana. to Ghana, slap you. They didn't tell you welcome. They tell me, say, this is Ghana. Oh, this is Ghana. Each time where you call me, may send me a message. Because from there, as I can't see the thing, I can't even say, Afa. Since they'll be like this, no worry, no, I no act again. Uh, I no do mechanic again. Because they tell me, say, for there, he gave mechanic a place where I, I go go, he go carry me go there, I go feed the land, I go feed the do work for there, they collect money. I don't say, no worry, I no do again. Ma come out, since you say, I've been a mechanic, if I come out, see any mechanic workshop, I know how to talk to them, where I, they go feed allow me, they, they find money on my own transport, go back. Since you say, uh, no more acting. Now where I enter for night, uh, if I can't come out, I don't know where I won't follow. Now where I have been on my first time. So I was like confused. Then before the call bring bright and I just say, Alpha, if you know the kind of place where you come like this, you for no come on. When did they bring bright? That same that was on uh, uh, April. How many days after? April. Is it up to two weeks, three weeks no, after? That same time. Him they come, he come with them. Then I say, Alpha, if you know where you're coming from, no come on. This one, I, I know go say, nah, hair fire, this one, I pass hair fire. Because a place where we say, if they call you, they call your name. Because they lock you now from inside the door. When he decide to open the door, he call you, you stand. He go fair, tell me like seven horse slap before he go tell me what you want me to do. So before you're given instruction, you receive slap yes, first. Like seven hot slap before they tell me what I go do. I think that one is the one that Nigerians will jokingly say is to reset your brain. Mm. Yeah? Okay, oh. let me ask uh, Bright. Bright. So how did you end up in Accra? Where were you and who told you you needed to go to Accra? Firstly, I was I was living in Benin, so I came from Ebony State, and I left Ebony State. Speak a bit louder so I that I can hear. I left Ebony State to stay with my sister in Benin, and staying there, I was actually working. I do all this network marketing and like involving people into my business and selling some uh, healthcare products, something like that. And actually, I was earning enough money like to keep up myself, but not that contented because I wanted more. Then when the guy came to Benin, he was staying in a hotel in Benin, and he said he needed boys that is he's into acting and also he do Bitcoin trading. Then me, I needed someone that can teach me Bitcoin trading because it was a legal business, though it's online business, or it's something you can invest your money into. So it was a legal business. I was happy that Okay, this will pay me more. Then I told him, okay, hope going to your house. Because he told me he was taking me to his house. That he wasn't taking me to any other place. That I shouldn't worry. I shouldn't be scared. That's okay. Now, taking me to your house. Hope you won't, like, nobody will disturb me there. Because I will just need to do 
what took me there, what took me there, and earn my money and come back to my parents. He told me that I shouldn't worry, that everything is fine, that he's, he's, I should take him as my friend. I said, okay, no problem. Then when the time came, I met him on Wednesday. Then he told me that I should go home, get ready, and come to him on the Thursday evening to come and meet him in the hotel where he lodged. I said, okay. He gave me some money to transport back home. Then I transported back home and get trading. I told my senior brother, I said, she, she, she. He said, okay, that Bitcoin trading is a legal business, though it's online, but it's a legal business. According to his own knowledge, I said, okay. That is what I thought also. He said I should go. But where I was going, he didn't tell me. He said he based in Lagos. Then from Lagos, when I got when we got to Lagos, he said that Staying in Lagos, that Nigerian network is this, Nigerian network is that, and there was no light in Nigeria, all this kind of stuff. He said, he said he was going to South Africa. He said he has house there where he lives. That he normally come to visit Nigeria. So he told you, South over. Africa, there is always light. There is no problem. Yes, that the network is 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 good and the, the electricity electricity uh, this thing is very strong there that we should go to South Africa. So he used lights and electricity and all that to convince yes. you to let us go. Yes. So when did you leave Lagos? Was it within a couple of days I you left to, Lagos? I came to Lagos on the last day of March. Then uh, on on the 1st of April, that was on Sunday. We entered Lagos on sat, uh, Saturday morning. Then on Sunday morning, then we left Lagos. You went through? We went through water. We, we took, you went through Cotonou? Yeah. Or where did you go? We went to, we just got to a border then. Which border? border? Do you know whether it was Seme border? Not You don't know which? Because we went through the uh, water. Oh, water? Yes, but we we still were starting border. Uh, uh, this, uh, but you don't know which water it was? You don't know which uh, river know or sea? Because, because it was my second time of coming to Lagos. The first time I came to Lagos, I just came for church program. Then that was the first time I came to Lagos that I was able to move around. Okay, so when you got to the border, you went through. But you didn't come to Lagos with a passport. No, I, I, no, I don't have a passport. Do you I have a passport I, now? I told him I don't have a passport. And yes. He told me that he has a way of moving. That this is not his first time of coming to Nigeria and going back. That our going is not a problem. Like he has agent, a trusted agent that can take us through. So you don't need passports. Yeah, I don't need passports. And when you got to Accra, did you know that you were already in Accra or you just knew you were somewhere, you don't know where? No, he told me that we are going to South Africa. So when we go to Bene, I was not like, where are we now? He said, we are in Bene Republic. Well, uh, if I've heard of Bene Republic, I told him, yes, that I've heard of Bene Republic. He said, okay, this is Bene Republic. We passed Bene, entered Togo. He told me this is Togo. Now the next place we are entering is uh, Ghana. That we pass through Accra. Uh, it will, uh, when we go to Accra, that will take a bus that will take us to South Africa. Hmm. Okay, so you got to Accra and you did not go to South Africa. How did you get into the house where they had Zeal and um, and Daniel and Victor? Uh, when we got to Accra, he, he arranged with the uh, cabman that took us to his house in Accra. Then he told the he just went to the uh, uh, cab driver. I told him this way I'm going. We just discussed and we got into the car. Is this that, guy a Nigerian or a Ghanaian? No, it was when we got there. I told me he's from Cameroon. Oh, he told you he's from Cameroon. Yes. Sir. And his name is Daniel. Yes, he told me his name is Daniel. But when we got there, my brother, which is Victor, was not like calling him Ricky. Oh, then, he told you it was Daniel. Yeah. What did he tell you his name was? Yeah. Huh? Mayor. Mayor. And the same person told you that he's Ricky. Yes, sir. So he gives each of you different, different names. names. Yes. To you, he is he's Daniel. Daniel. To Victor, he is Ricky. To Zeal, he is Mayor. Yes, sir. Okay. And when he discussed with the cab driver, he said I should get into the uh, cab. And the cab is now taking us to the park where we will take bus to South Africa. Then we went, I went into the car and we drove off. The next thing I could see was uh, a friend of the, the, the guy, like his friend just came outside from the street and was like, oh, you are welcome back. I was not like, ah, is this South Africa or we are still in Accra? He said, I should not worry that we are going to rest in his friend's place before moving the next morning that he's tired, that he needed to sleep. 
I said, okay, no problem then. We so moved. you followed him into the yeah, house? We, we followed, his friend came into the car with us and we moved to the house. So when you got to the house? When we got to the house, he just told me, yeah, this is Ghana. Yeah, they don't say welcome to Ghana. Yeah, this is Ghana. This he is Ghana. Me, you did not receive slap. He gave me a dirty slap. He gave me a two slap at the same time. And two I, slaps? Yes. When he slapped me, I was like, ah, well, you are my friend. You told me that we are friends. Why slapping me okay. just because you get into the house? Then after I said the word, then his friend came in and gave me another slap. Okay. Uh, one second. You can sit down. So we'll take a short break. When we come back, I will continue the conversation with Bright, but I would also like to talk to you, Ezekiel. I have a feeling your own story is even more interesting. So we take a short break. When we come back, we start talking to Ezekiel. The emotions are high. People are angry. People are in tears. I notice. All around me, there are people, many of them trying to salvage whatever they can salvage. This is Mohammed Mohamed who was shot by one of the officers of the Nigerian Army. This is the hole where the bullet penetrated, and that's the second hole. Right behind me are members of the Nigerian police force to alert the protesters that they've gone past their time. <laughs> They came out with um, reinforcement, basically. Hey, hey, All right, I don't to do roll on now. I'll wait up. Uh, thank you for staying with us. We appreciate your engagement in this conversation once again. We've been speaking with five Nigerian boys who've just been rescued and brought into Nigeria from Ghana, where they were trafficked under the guise of promising job opportunities. It is good to have you uh, in here, gentlemen and ladies. Uh, now, let me come to you, Ezekiel. So uh, help me understand, where were you and how did you end up, where were you living in Nigeria and how did you end up going to Ghana? Um, the guy that took me to Ghana, his name is Ricky, according to him. So he tell me, say, he have, um, he have more things like they work for office. So He told you he was working in some office. Yes. So the place I met, I met him, we met at the barbing salon. I bap him. So he, he tell me, say, ah, you're too good for barbing, no. I would like you to be my personal barber. I said, okay. So he told me, do you have anything to, do you have any other job? I said, no. He asked me the amount that my guy is paying me. I said, it's um, 25,000. He said, oh, that is so poor. I said, okay. He said, he's going to pay me um, 1,800 CD. If I could 1,800 have... CDs. Yeah. How much was your salary? That was 25,000. 25,000, and it was going to multiply it by about five or six times. So you were ready to follow him to where? He said, uh, first of all, he said, we are going to drop at the um, Seme border. So from there, we drop at the Seme, uh, Seme border. Seme border, sorry. You know, if you tell me, say, we go back to uh, Ghana. So I, for my mind, I think say, now, Seme border we will go. So... Getting there, he tell me, say, uh, this is not the place we are going to. We, we should move to Ghana. So he have he house there. I asked him, what So you two, you don't have a passport. No, no, Somebody no. told you you're going to Ghana. You know that if you're going abroad or going outside the country, you need a passport, but you had none. He just told you, go to Seme. You got to Seme. And then he said, let's go to Ghana. I tell, I tell him, I say, I don't get a passport, though. He tell me, say, man, no worry for passport. I still ask him, what about feeding and uh, accommodation? Tell me, she have house for dear, so I will be staying with him. I say, okay. I, see, I still ask him, what about passport? He say he's going to do that for me. For, for that, I even, I even tell him, I say, you know, see, if we go for Ghana, maybe police will stop us, say, where's your own passport? I mean, I don't get passport. If he arrest me, say, man, no worry. Say, now, nah, what are they will follow? Oh, so did you go on water? Yes. From where? From Semeboda? From Semeboda. 
but you don't know which water it was. Yes. You got on a boat. Yes, sir. And the boat ferried you along all the way to Ghana. somewhere that was said to be Ghana. Yes. So you arrived in Ghana. Yeah. And did you know where you were? You didn't know. It was, it was night. It was night. Yes. So you arrived at night. Yes. And did you come out of the water, the boats, and then you got in a cab, or what happened? When we, when we come out from water, I tried to ask him a question. Where are we? Say, um, we are in Ghana now. So, man, no worry. Say, now nah, house we they go. Get it there. Get it to park. Say, he, he, he just thought to bus driver, we will carry us, go to the house. Say, see where we are going to. See where we are going to. I so, said, you got to the house, and what happened? After getting there, he first tell me, say, man, give her my phone. Because, you know, say, I will, I will, I will, I will get contact with my friend. Tell him, say, see where I deal. I'm frustrated. The first time he said, "Man, give her my phone." As I, as he said, "Man, give her my phone," and my phone was slow. She won't use that too. I said, "Okay, take." Before that, he slapped me. I said, "Ah, ah what's happened now? How come?" He said, "From now, I'm not your guy. You are going to call me your chairman." Before get, before going inside, I saw four boys. I tell, I asked him, "You know, you know, tell me, say you get boys so." He said, eh, "Then they work for me." And they work for now. They see the same work you will do. I see the same work you will do. I say, which kind of work? He said, don't worry. They will teach you. I will, that will be the, the one that will teach you. I say, how? I hope it's not what I'm thinking. Say, no, no, no. This is not what. No, don't let that come to your mind. Uh, what, what were you thinking at that I time? Was, I was thinking maybe because my mind, definitely my mind doesn't accept online scamming. So I can't force my flesh to accept it. So he tell me, say, man, no worry. Say, no be wait till they think. I say, okay, no problem. Okay, so you then had to settle down and they taught you? Before, before, I, even, before, before I even go there, before we even go to the parlor, he tell, he tell me, say, man, I remove my clothes. And only my boss, I say, I go, I will tell you, remove my clothes. Young boy like me, I know if he, he say, no woman day inside. I say, no, this is not the matter of no woman day inside. I can't be naked. He didn't tell me this. He say, "Ma, remove my clothes." He give me three slap again. I was like, "Okay, no problem. I have no choice." So I after remove. that, you remove your clothes, yeah. and then you joined the rest of the boys. Yes, I see. This is not the barbing salon you told me. You told me that you are going. To, I'm going to be your personal barber, and I will work in in office too. He said, "Yes, this is the office." Okay, so there was no barbing for you. How old are you? I'm 24. You're 24, okay. And uh, Bright, you're 20. You can sit down. Victor, you're 20. And the two of you, Zeal and Daniel, you're 17. Almost 18. When are you going to be 18, Zeal? November 11. Huh? November 11. Oh, so your birthday is around the corner. And yours? Huh? You're already 18 in September. Okay, that's fine. So... The brother, what's your name? Fidi Matthias. Huh? Fidi Matthias. Ifedi. Matthias. Okay, so Ifedi, yeah. your brother is Victor. And yes. Victor was taken by Ricky, who told somebody else that he was mayor and somebody else that he was Daniel. How did you know Ricky? I met Ricky a while I went, to, I came to Lagos here to bypass in my two. So, we both entered the same uh, Siena. So, and uh, he asked me, where am I going to? And I told him, um, I still, I live in Benin, um, but where I'm going to work is uh, on the street. It's okay. So he, con he asked me for my contact and I gave him my contact. And he told me that day that he too is going to Benin. So, and I asked him, where are you coming from? And he told me he is coming back from uh, South Africa. I say, wow. Well, so you are welcome. So he now asked me that he's hungry and uh, the only money left by him that day is uh, his transport transport fare. I said, okay. I asked him how much did he need and he said any amount I can give. I gave him one thousand that day. So. We now enter the same sea and uh, although I, I bought a pass for the vehicle I'm working. So it was even the one that insisted 
as they supported me that day while dropping the pass in on those states. So he so followed yeah. you from Lagos to on those yeah. states. Yeah, where he collected no, he one. Yeah, we exchanged contact through through there. So on um, when I got to Benin, he texted me because he when we met at Lagos, he was not with, that is he don't have a SIM card. So the only SIM card with him there, he says, um, in South Africa. Number, uh, okay. Number. And so through How there, did he meet uh, Victor? He met Victor through me. He met Victor through you? Yeah. But he never offered to take you to Ghana or South Africa as no, a mechanic? No, he never offered me that. But he offered Victor? Yes. Okay. All right, you can sit down. So now we have an understanding of all of what you guys have been through. So, I would ask you, starting with you, Bright, how much beating did you get and how much food were you given and how long were you there for? Firstly, when we got there, uh, the first day, he asked us to cook and after we cooked, from the second day, we started cooking once in a day, sometimes once in two days. Then, and the food we cook, we cook without maggi, we cook without onion and pepper. Then we're feeding that way once in a day, once in two days sometimes. Then after that... So what do you cook with this uh, no onion, no we pepper? We eat only rice and uh, gari. Sometimes rice and gari that. every day? Yes, yes. At times once in two days? Yes. Then okay. after that, then beating every morning, every afternoon, night, every time we receive beating. Like at time, some at a point, they said this uh, that something got missing in the house, and he said I should identify the person. I said I don't have means of identifying the person because I'm not a prophet that I could see spiritually, and I don't have anything to look after the house. Then he started beating me, gave me several several marks on my body, and after it all, he mixed the pain. So you have marks all over your body. Yes. If I okay, I think we. Okay, I think we. Then he mixed the pain in the water and rub it all over my body after flogging. After out. flogging you yes, and, and you had blood cuts. Blood was all over my body. Blood? With the wounds, yes. Because after he flogged me and my body was just scattered and after, like if you whip the cane on my body, you see blood splashing all over the places. And Were you crying? I, I cried to some point and I noticed that it was very serious and very heartless to let go. I just, I stopped crying. It was just beating. It, it flogged me more than one hour, steady flogging. And I was like, okay, just body will flog. And just only this blood that is flowing, I will only flow. You can't take my life. Then after flogging, he missed pepper, raw pepper in the side of water. And, and that would have been body. so painful. Because uh, he naked me and he pulled everything out. So you were totally stuck naked, naked, not even boxers. Yeah, I was totally naked, lying on the floor after. So there was a day. There was a day he was he was hit by his neck and he passed out. I like him to tell us about that the day. Same, well. yeah. The same day he rubbed the paper. He was after he flogged me. After he rubbed the paper on my body, he left me for about one hour. There, the paper was very hot and pepperish. I, I became unconscious, lying there. I was just rolling. I don't know where I, where I was anymore. When I tried to look front, I was just as if a smoke covering my sides. I was not able to see anything. When they are talking, I could not hear anything again. I, I fainted that day. Then the second day before, that was on Saturday before, uh, the New Central, in collaboration with the Ghanaian police, came to our rescue. That was on Saturday before they came on Monday. He hated me again and at the back of my head, ear, on my neck, and I fainted on the floor again. Then the Daniel Zeal and the Daniel Zeal, Ezekiel and Victor, who was there present, was now shocked. And they were all like scared because they thought the same thing was going to happen to them. And that was when Daniel and Zeal was the one chatting the family member and the yeah, New Central uh, 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 worker who they sent to come and rescue. It was not like, no, this is unbearable, that they need to do something fast. They started texting and disturbing that they need to leave the place. So you were there from April from of April. this year until you were rescued? Yes, sir. That was about seven complete months. 
seven months. And in that seven months, did you at any time pray or thought about praying? Yes, we pray. We pray sometimes. Uh, we were praying, we said the prayer is disturbing him, that we should stop making noise, uh, this, 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 that. We just, he would just come, shout at us, slap us. And when you're praying, what do you ask God to do for you? I just ask God, uh, uh, like, I don't have any other choice, because he said until I make money, that money is what brought me to his house, until I make money before I will be able to leave the house. Then I told God, uh, God, this is the situation I'm into, like, I need your intervention. By all means, I just want to leave this place. I don't need to leave because if I don't leave this place, I might do something stupid one day. Because I might just wake up one day, get into his room while he's sleeping and stab him with a knife. Then oh, it crossed your mind it to... It crossed my mind to do that. Well, had, when you were I thinking of it, were really, you thinking of it in terms of you were ready to just kill him? That I was it's either like, you die or after, he dies? After he beats me and everything, to the point I developed stomach ulcer that ate my body. Like, if I put my, if I could show you, the place it became very deep that if I touch it, I will not see any flesh there. I will not notice any flesh. The injury was deep. Yes, that very severe pain. I, I will not notice any flesh. It was be as if I'm touching the bone of my ribs. And ah. that was when the pain was so severe. Uh, every time, I, I would cry like babies every time because the pain was so severe. And I've never experienced such pain in, before. Then it crossed my mind one day to do something stupid and just end his life and find my way back home. But I had no such mind because I was brought up in a Christian home. And my mom always told me that hurting someone is not proper. That the same way the person is feeling the pain, what if uh, the, the same thing was done to me? How would I feel? And that was why, after thinking of everything, I was still relax my mind, praying to God, oh God, I just need your intervention because I know you are the only one that can bring me out of this mess that I caught myself into. Okay, how did you get a message out which reached uh, New Central eventually? When we got there, he took our sims, hid it away, um, destroyed our phones, and so he kept receiving distress call, distress message. My son would say, I want to kill myself, I want to die, the, the, the pain is unbearable. We were here uh, in a region in Ghana where the boys were kept, and they had several laptops, computers, 